So I'm Evan Pratt. I've been the Water Resource Commissioner. I'm starting my third term. There are four-year terms. Uh, all the counties uh, are on the same cycle as the presidential cycle. I guess it gets more people out for the vote. Um, first off, uh, my cell phone number is 734-277-5359. So if there's anything that's just uh, really uh, uh, an issue or concern where you feel like you need to go to the top, I'm always happy to take calls. Um, there was a question earlier today about, hey, what if we've got a problem, but we're maybe not wanting to work with the drain office because uh, it, it's of a scale that might not make sense to involve a larger government agency. I'm always good for taking calls and just kicking things around with uh, people from the communities, even if it's not something for us to work on. And uh, you will meet uh, our deputy for engineering services, Scott Miller, a little later. Uh, he and I both take calls like that. We go out and visit with people and walk around uh, with township officials. Again, just to provide you some idea of what your options might be uh, if you've got somebody that's just in your ear and you're not really sure how to get them out of your ear <laughs> on, on a water issue of some sort. Um, today, we're going to talk mostly about drainage and what uh, our public works operations uh, do in the areas of recycling and lake management. We, the county also has the opportunity for people to do financing for water and sewer. And in the past, many townships took advantage of that and even the city of Ann Arbor in the 70s, but there hasn't been much uh, demand for that service for about 15 years. So we're not gonna spend any time on that today, but just know that uh, there is a, a, an act that allows the county's full faith and credit to help with financing if there's a major, major issue in various communities. And certainly the county has done that uh, all over the place in the past 30 years or so. Uh, with that, a um, couple other things I want to mention. We're always willing to come to a board meeting, a township board meeting, or a city or village council meeting and do a customized presentation. We have found in the past that dialogue uh, in the past couple of years with communities like Northfield Township, Freedom Township, Augusta Township, Ipsy Township, and so on has been very productive. We like to show up with a, a map of where our, our infrastructure is at and uh, some dots that just show where we've been getting service calls over time. And that's a good talking point, but we're also there to listen because sometimes people don't know what we do or how to reach us or how to register a complaint or a service request, and you'll hear all about that today. Um, I gave out my phone number. I do want to mention that 99% of the time for routine service, the fastest way is just to go direct uh, to our uh, front office staff or use an online app we have. Uh, Scott will touch on that, but I do understand some people want to talk to the boss uh, about various things, and I'm always happy to do that. Uh, just know that the, the fastest service for routine stuff just comes through the regular process. I, I may not get to an email for a day or two, I may not be able to return a call same day uh, if things are really pressing, like if it's raining really hard. <laughs> so uh, all of that for background. Uh, with that, I think I'd like to just uh, be quiet at my end and let Scott and Theo walk through the programs. They're a little more economical uh, with their words. And there's not many of us, so just chime in if you've got a question right off the bat or if you wanna put something in the chat uh, we'll, we'll pause and, uh, and bring that up uh, when, when we've got a minute. Autumn is monitoring those. So I'd like to turn it over to Scott Miller, who's also a licensed engineer, as am I, and he's going to talk a lot. He's the deputy. He's going to talk a lot about the services that we think townships uh, use the most. Scott, take it away. All right. Thank you. And, and like Evan said, um, really, this is a very intimate group, so um, I even though if it can be informal, that's great. I, I won't, I cringe when the moderators start out, with, let's go around the room and introduce ourselves and tell us one thing that's, <laughs> you know, unique to our ourselves. But, um, so I'm not gonna ask you to do that, but um, <clears throat> it is a small group. So um, I, I think if there is stuff that comes along, I'd rather you, you voice it in the moment so you don't lose your train of thought. So, um, we'll get going. We, we do have a mission statement that, that Autumn's put up here. Um, but, but what I want to go over really this evening, I, I think it, it would be about 20 minutes, so it shouldn't take too long to do a real quick nutshell, is 
to talk about kind of three three aspects and, and the, the the things that I'm most familiar with it with our office. You know, the, the main one being what do we actually do? Um, how do we do those things? How do we get them done? And then one thing that might be um, more um, dear to your hearts as as township officials or local units of governments is the budgeting and how we pay for it because um, that, that that starts to involve you. So uh, I'm gonna kind of everything I do will, will relate to one of those three three items and, and let's let's go through it. So let's um, we'll go to the next one. Autumn, thank you. Again, I have a uh, I came up with a list of just a general overview of what we do. But really, you know, I, I kind of step back because um, I've, this is my 25th year with the county and on a professional level and even on a personal level, um, when I run into, to, whether it's family, acquaintances, friends, and they, you know, they ask you, well, what do you do? You know, my snarky answer is, oh, I, I like to jog and I'm, you know, I like to watch TV, but when we get down to it and I tell people well, I work for what used to be the drain commissioner or, or now the water resources commissioner, I, I don't recall an instance where someone didn't go, well, drain commission, you know what, like what, what's that? I don't even know what that means. And I think that's been very common in my experience. So um, obviously I didn't put it straight on this list. We take care of drains. Yes, <laughs> we operate and maintain legally established county drains, but I did put a list together over the next, this and the next slide of um, a lot of the other things we do. Um, and I'm gonna go through the ones that I'm most familiar with and, I, and then Theo is gonna go through the, the public work side, but just this on this page, you, real briefly, you can see some of it's related to drains where we establish new drains. Some of it's not, you know, we do some state regulated dam maintenance and have authority over some court set lake levels. Um, we do vegetation management. I think we can go to the next next slide too. Um, and, then, and then another host of kind of related but disparate things. Our office happens to house the soil erosion um, agency for the county. Um, we're heavily involved with the mapping, GIS, um, through the county. Um, obviously, as, as Theo is going to go over, we have a robust public works program. We do have a rain garden program, a master rain gardener training, and, and a lot of stewards out in the community for that. And then even on a federal level, we, we're, we work with the federally mandated stormwater permit, the MS4s, uh, when you hear that term thrown around. So I, I'm going to kind of go through the ones I'm familiar with, and, and then we'll, we'll talk a little more in depth about those. So we'll go to the next one. So um, I got a map that, that Autumn put together for us, and hopefully you recognize it as Washtenaw County. And this particular map, um, it shows a couple of things, but the, what it is depicting is everything in blue in this map represents a legally established drainage district. So we have over 500 county drainage districts in, in the Washtenaw County. And each one of them is its own individual legal entity. So, so they're all separate and disparate. They have, they have their own budgets, they have their own funds. Every, there are over 500 distinct and individual ones. Um, and they basically represent watersheds for, for individual drains or con water conveyances. Uh, they don't overlap per se because each watershed is distinct, but there are a lot of cases where some watersheds are wholly within another. So we have sub-districts, so to speak. So I, I wanted to show this picture, one to show that it covers a lot of the county, but on the other hand, there's a lot of white too, where we don't have jurisdiction. So um, as much as I would like it to be simple and, and if there was a, uh, an issue with the lake or stream in the county, you could just call us. Um, it's actually a little more complex than that. So um, we'll get into that though. But uh, that, that being said, within all those drainage districts, um, there's 
about well, a little bit over 700 miles of water conveyances or county drains that, that we manage or have jurisdiction on. So um, that, that's not actually a particularly large amount of the water courses in the, in the county. Um, Evan had pointed out actually in our earlier session that um, that only covers maybe 15 to 20 percent of what you would consider a historic creek within the county. So it, it's, it's not that much of the county. And in fact, um, other agencies, you know, that have jurisdiction over some water courses, for example, the Road Commission, um, they have jurisdiction over double the amount of mileage of infrastructure that we do. So um, we certainly govern a lot, but but not all. So when I when I say that, I go, okay, well, what what else? Who else is here? Um, one you certainly have heard of is uh, the great state of Michigan. Um, govern some. So there is waters of the state in Washtenaw County that is now governed by Eagle or the in, you know, environmental Great Lakes and something. Again, I always forget the last E. And you may know it as MDEQ if you're like me and it's been around a few years. So, so we have some waters of the state. Sometimes they're maintained by these transportation authorities. So the Road Commission, um, MDOT has, you know, obviously the, the freeways and interstates that they have drainage on. Sometimes it might be you, <laughs> local units of governments in the townships or the cities. Um, and then finally, they, they just may be private. So, um, and in some cases, there might be dual jurisdiction. So that's not complex enough. So um, I, I set this up to say, um, we really need this, or we try to make this to be a collaborative environment so that when uh, a property owner calls, we can get something done and, and not, not just pass the buck, so to speak. So uh, I'll do a real quick aside. This, when I say legal established county drain and jurisdiction and all this stuff, for us as the water resource commissioner, that's all based on the drain code. So that's a, a Michigan state statute. It was originally enacted in 1956, um, several hundred pages long at this point, hundreds and hundreds of sections. I, I would say it, it's fairly complex. Um, and it, it's sort of the overall governing uh, body of rules that we work under. So just, just put that out there for now. All right, I think we can go to the next one, Autumn. All right, another view, another map. This one, again, county map. Uh, I, I put this, or I asked Autumn to put this up for a couple of reasons. Um, the actual map, it, it shows everything in the blue lines is the county drains. So the, those are the actual drains that are located within the drainage districts. But more than that, I wanted to point out that on the county websites, if you're interested in your township, you can find a drain map that shows your individual township, like Larry out in Freedom, you know, however, you know, what your point of interest is. And the other part is I, I, I really hope that every one of you's had a chance to do this at least once is the county does house Map Washtenaw, which is our GIS mapping service. And while it, it shows all of our drains and our drain easements and things like that, um, it also shows a lot of other really interesting stuff like floodplain, the state floodplain maps are there, soil series maps are on there. We have the aerial photography. So we did have our latest flight was in 2020. Uh, all the road information, parcel information with links to the, you know, the BSNA system. Um, so I really encourage you if, if you want to kind of poke around, that's, that's kind of a nice, um, I don't know what the young people call these, a tool or a, an application, um, but it's a nice little feature that we have on the county website. I, I, I at least want to point out, um, kind of proud of that. Okay, I think we can go to the next one. So I'll get into this. So so what do we do? Um, Evan noted that, that he's an engineer, that I'm an engineer. Um, I would say I'm very confident that, that all of our guests today know some of the, the principal rules of 
stormwater management already. And the first and foremost one that we, we always go back to is the, the number one law, natural or otherwise for us is water flows downhill. You know, I, I think a lot of the stuff we do goes back to that, you know, and most people grasp that water flows downhill. And to that end, every single parcel within the county, when it rains, probably in some form or another, water runs off it to the lower elevation. And um, I do know, happen to know that in Washtenaw County, we're not in a bowl that every bit of Washtenaw County eventually runs off somewhere else. So in, in our county, for example, almost the entirety of the county is in the Lake Erie watershed. So, so some of the runoff from all these parcels ends up in Lake Erie, you know, by whatever uh, route or streams or watersheds bring it there. And at the very, very western edge, and actually I learned this when I was prepping, pre prepping for this, was there, are, there is a tiny bit of the western bit of Washtenaw County that it's in the Lake Michigan watershed, which I, I kind of found interesting. So I, I say that in the, in the sense of every single site in the county has a stormwater management system. Um, it might be as simple as water hits the grass and just runs off to the next property. Um, or it might be an engineered thing with the pipes and the detention basins and the infiltration, green infrastructure, et cetera. But every site can have water running off of it. So, you know, got to take care of it. All right. Um, I kind of touched this on this before. Again, I put it on here to reemphasize what about drains that are not under our authority? It could be a, a, a lot of other groups, but, but we try to talk to them. So I'll say this a lot, but um, really and, and very seriously, um, if you just don't know, and, and I'll, you know, it's sometimes it is hard to figure out even internally, you know, whose infrastructure is what, um, just call us. I mean, we, we send people out all the time in areas where we're not really sure if it's our stuff or not. And even if it's not, we can work with you or work with the other agencies directly to get stuff done. So don't hesitate to contact us. I think we'll move on. Next one. Um, so what do we, what do we specifically do? Um, one thing we do is um, we do review and approval or permitting. So if you um, essentially, if you discharge water to a county drain uh, directly, so if the, the drain either abuts a parcel or traverses a parcel, um, we'll review and approve or, or issue permits on new construction of their stormwater systems. So um, again, that's not all over the county. Um, we do that um, quite frequently. Um, we have a staff of two engineers that, that do that uh, full time. And <clears throat> we do have agreements with some of the townships um, where they have enacted um, under their stormwater ordinances where we'll do reviews of sites on the township's behalf or in conjunction with the township's reviews. So we have a system, for example, in Pittsfield Township where I live, where um, we review um, some of the housing developments that come along there. So I, <clears throat> I, I wanted to emphasize that that's certainly something that's available um, to all the townships if, if you, you feel so inclined. Another thing that I, I, I separated out here was, was housing stuff, which is a little bit more, um, I think with the economies coming back in, in some areas right now is um, if, if you didn't know this, the, the drain commissioner or water resource commissioner is, is legally required to sign all plats, so a platted subdivision. Um, so with, with that mandate comes our right to have um, permitting and jurisdictional authority over their stormwater system. So one thing we do there is create new drains um, within those developments um, when they become online. And you know, nowadays that a lot of, lot of site condominiums have supplanted the platting process. Um, if we have direct jurisdiction, 
we can do the same thing and create new drains on sites that abut a drain. And like I mentioned with the townships, there's a lot of townships where we do that on their behalf or they like us to do that too. So that's all done under the drain code again. So I, I right here it's section 433 outlines that process, which again, a uh, little reminder that there's at least 433 sections in the drain code. <laughs> so um, a lot of, lot of stuff to go through if, if you um, need it. But I'll move on. So I, I won't take too much time. We'll go to the next one. I get that next one, Autumn. Sorry, it looks like we're frozen here. Ah. Uh, I, I can, I'll just keep going. So hopefully you're you're excited and this is engaging my voice alone. There we go. But, oh, well, I was hoping I was engaging and exciting, but uh, some other things we do, I mentioned before. So, um, we take care of state regulated dams, some of them. Again, I would say we don't have a lot in, in the county. So there's four or five, um, not, not always ones people are real super aware of. I know some of the ones for the city of Ann Arbor um, and Ypsilanti, those are, those are not under our control, but um, we do a, a couple of those through the state. And then we also do lake levels. So um, that's kind of an interesting program because it, it, it's they're court mandated, so so they're set by court order through through that system, but um, they get actually get set up through petition. So so citizens can petition us, um, townships, and, and they ultimately go through our board of uh, commissioners to um, take them on to the courts. But essentially, what we do at the lake level, and again, we we don't have a lot of these. I would say again in the level of four or five. Um, essentially what it is, is we set a water elevation either seasonally or year round, the, the, whatever the court decides and, and try to maintain that level um, throughout the year. So sometimes this is set for recreational purposes, um, wildlife management, you know, maybe the, the duck migrations, things like that, environmental reasons. A lot of times it's done for shoreline protection um, you know, protecting seawalls and, and other man-made structures in the winter so the ice doesn't damage them. Um, so it's just a, it's a, it's another, another thing that we do. That's kind of a, that statute is actually separate from the drain code, but I, I'm guessing we can certainly, I don't see anyone clamoring to talk about it, but um, it, 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 that is one item that is a, a sort of a, a statute separate from the drain code that, that we administer in our office. All right, let me do the next one. <clears throat> Another thing that we do, so, so this is a program, it's mandated by the federal government and then ultimately through the state of Michigan is this, we house the soil erosion and sedimentation control program for the county. So the, one of the things I, I, I always wanna emphasize here is the state says you, either the county or the local municipality has to do this. This is not, a, not a, an option. So we're the county or the, I, I wrote the CEA, the county enforcing agent. And if you're one of the local municipalities, you also have the option to do it within your own municipality separate from the county. And that's called a municipal enforcing agency or an MEA. <clears throat> so this is an important and near to dear to our hearts because um, and I wrote here, the sediment is definitely by far the greatest pollutant by volume we see impacting our waterways. And uh, this is a lot of this is from coming from uncontrolled erosion, um, getting to our lakes and streams. So um, we're very pleased that this is something that's housed in our office and that we, we can take care of. So on the next slide here, <clears throat> again, this is like the same thing with the, the county drains. This is a little bit of a patchwork. So, so this county map, um, everything in blue shows uh, areas where we are the county enforcing agency or we're doing the soil erosion. But probably a good half of the county and the Western side for sure, um, those are done by the municipality or under order of the municipality. So like Ypsilanti and 
Pittsfield, for example, do their own soil erosion as an MEA. You get out near Manchester and the Western Washtenaw Construction Authority does that on behalf of, of those townships out there. Um, again, I, I always go back to though, if you're unsure or you, you want advice or you wanna talk that just call us or get a, get a hold of us. Um, you know, we, we really like to cut through these jur jurisdictional lines if we can. So, all right, um, I guess we can go to the next one. All right, so let's talk about, okay, I talked about a few of the things we do. Um, I haven't really talked about, well, how do we get this stuff done? Um, so we, we do it in two ways. Um, we have like the proactive and the reactive way. Um, our proactive program now is, is, is done through an asset management program. So, um, and we proactively manage our drains in a, in a number of ways. So we do, have a, we do have a drain staff, a field staff and equipment. So we go out and like we do a mowing program where we mow open channel drains to keep them clear. We also do clearing and brushing along open channel drains to keep them clear and also to prevent like deadfall, log jams and other obstacles from forming in the drains. Um, we do pipe system cleaning. So we have a vector truck for those that are familiar with it, where we can jet out and clean out sediment and debris um, from pipe systems. We do, um, we have some heavy equipment operators where we can do sediment removal from drains and, and we just do old, old fashioned inspections. So, so we have a lot of ways to proactively keep the drains clean and running. Again, I think Evan coined this, so I'll give him credit if, if, if you like it. Um, <clears throat> we sort of liken it, you know, a couple of analogies. The one I've heard that seems to hit home with me is like car maintenance. You know, if you wanna keep your car running with, with fewer breakdowns, you know, you need to rotate the tires, you need to do the oil changes, you need to do the fluids, the filters, et cetera. Um, that's what our asset management program is. Is, is an attempt to do that, um, to keep the drains running so we don't have problems. But when I say that, um, we do have 700 miles of drain and we're not out there, I'll be honest, we're not, we don't have a staff that gets us out there to every single one, every single year. So another um, option we have is our reactive program or our service request module. So <clears throat> we have staff on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where if you call us, and again, I the you technologically advanced people who so use the intro webs and the Facebooks and things, um, you can go online and during office hours, you can do a service request with either our administrative staff or our managers like Autumn and, and some of her, her team. And you can also, um, talk to our inspectors when you call if, if need be, but we can come out if there's flooding, if it's raining and there's flooding issues, if there's pipe breakages, um, you know, essentially emergency type things where there's a catastrophic failure or even a, a like a manhole covers missing, that type of thing. You can call us and, and we can get someone out there. So I mentioned the 24 hours a day we also have staff on call. So if you wanna contact us, us after business hours, like right now, um, there's no one at our front desk right now, but um, we do encourage people to do this. And, and I know people get a little reluctant, but we, we definitely encourage it and have a great system is we encourage people to call 911. So if <clears throat> you have a flooding emergency at night on the weekends, our emergency management system and I have in our office has a great relationship where they will get a hold of our drain personnel and get someone out there on on the off hours. So I just you know again same message um, I keep putting out there is if you have issues just go ahead and contact us. That's that's why we're here. We're here to here to do this. So um, I think we'll, we can go on to the next one. Um, cause I, I want to spend time. I know I'm going a little long, but, um, I did want to spend some time talking about what's, 
what sometimes is important to, to you as the, you know, the township and the local units where you're looking at your budgets and pain and all, all of that things is um, how do we, how do we pay for this stuff? Um, so I'll go briefly. I do want to emphasize right off the bat that uh, our office does not collect or receive tax revenue to do this. So there's, there's not a, an, a, uh, a standing tax bill um, that everybody gets um, locally or through the state or anything that that pays for this. And, and we don't have a bank account where like the state or the federal agencies allocated us a bunch of money to do this and we just dole it out as we, we see necessary. We, we just, we don't get money to operate and maintain our drains through any of those means. And I, I think that confuses a lot of people. Um, but, but it is an important distinction on how we operate. So uh, that's how we don't get our money, but how do we get our money? So we'll go to the next, next one and start talking about that. So um, great news, uh, we get to go through a few, is each of our programs may be sustained differently. So I'll step through them quickly, um, starting with soil erosion here. Soil erosion is, in my mind, it's pretty uh, straightforward. So we charge a fee directly to the recipients of our, our programs in that case. So if you need a soil erosion permit, then you will pay for it through our, a fee-based permitting program. And essentially the fees we charge are, are pretty much commensurate with the level of activity that you're doing on a site. So. Um, a hun several hundred acre housing development is going to pay a larger fee than a single family homeowner that might be putting in fence posts, for example. But essentially, the, the soil erosion program is just a fee based system where uh, townships, local units don't pay anything. So that's the good news on that one. Um, I think we can go to the next one. Um, the second one our engineering services, very similar. Um, instead of a project-based thing though, when we do our reviews, approvals, permitting, et cetera, for development kind of design stuff, same thing. Uh, the person getting the permit or getting the review pays for it. So in this case, the fees are actually commensurate with the amount of time it takes us to review. So it's a time-based thing. Again, that means the bigger, larger complex sites tend to incur a bigger fee, smaller, like a single a retail site would have probably a uh, proportionally smaller fee. But again, I guess the good news is it's not paid for by the township. So, so nothing to, to budget for there. I think we'll go on the next one. Um, oh, I put a reminder here. Did I, I think I mentioned, but we do not collect or receive tax monies to fund these programs. So, um, I think by far the biggest and most common thing I've heard from, from our citizenry over the years has been, I've lived here for 40 years, I've paid taxes for 30 years. Where did all that money go? How, where did you spend all my money for all these years? And it's sometimes it's hard to tell people, it's like we've never collected money over the years for this, so that's why we don't have it. We had to get it a different way. And so shockingly, I'm gonna tell you how we get it. So maybe we can go on to the next one here and tell you how we get those money. So um, the drain code, which again governs us, it has some spending limits on us because essentially part of the, the intent here is that the Water Resources Commissioner cannot just unilaterally decide to spend millions of, of taxpayer money on things that they wanna do um, without any input or oversight. So the drain code allows us to spend $5,000 per year per mile of county, main, of county drain that we maintain. So that's the, the cap that we work under. So it's again, it's like a buck a foot roughly. Um, we can get a lot done for that amount of money, but as you, you may guess, some of these systems, um, cost a whole lot more than that, especially if they've been in disrepair for decades. And we have drains that date back to the late 1800s. So we, we, we literally have drains that are 
120 years old that are the original drain made with clay tile, for example. So sometimes that, that money's not enough. And if we need to, if it's an emergency, our office by emergency decree can spend more money than that. <clears throat> also, and, and sometimes this involves you and your, 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 your boards, um, a township um, can pass a resolution to allow us to spend more money. And I won't get into the whole process, but the only thing I really note here is the reason the township can do that is because under the drain code, if a township has to pay at least 20% of what the cost incurred are going to be, they're allowed to do this. So that kind of means you're, you're resolving that you're going to be spending your own money as a part of this. So um, that's, that's a way that we can spend more on occasion. Um, one thing to talk about here is, again, I say this and people always think we have just a big pot of money. All the spending is unique to each one of these drain districts. So um, my, like I said, I live in Pittsfield Township, so I'm proud to be a resident. I'm also, sometimes it's nice to say, I actually live in two drainage districts. So I live in a, a housing development that has a drain um, system running through it. And then I have a natural water course that runs through our, our our subdivision that I also live in. So um, I can get two separate bills any given year if we do work on each of those separate drains. All right, I think we can go to the next one. Um, okay, there's another um, way we get stuff paid for. I, I mentioned that 433 thing in the past. Um, we can, with an agreement by an owner or, or a developer, for example, um, establish new drains and those said owners or developers, then they pay all the costs to get that drain up and running. So, so it's not a, a burden on the township or the individual property owners at that point. So that's one, one way we can pay for things. Another thing, and I haven't really mentioned this, is if a drain, like I said, if we have a drain that's been in disrepair for decades, or maybe you have a, a drain issue or a, we, we don't call them problems. We always call them opportunities. If we have a drain opportunity that's on a private drain, it's not a county drain, um, you as a township can either petition us or the property owners can petition us to create a drain or they can petition us to work on a, an existing drain. And there's a whole public hearing process that we go through under the drain code to do that. but. If that's successful and we do a petition project, um, there's no limit on the spending and the, and the commissioner has discretion on the scope of the project at that point. So it's another mechanism that we have to, to, to get stuff done. So I think we can go on the next one. All right, this is the, the big one, the one that, that actually involves you. So I've talked about a lot of ways we pay for this stuff, but when we maintain a drain, the main mechanism we use to pay for that is through a special assessment. So um, all the property owners that live in the, the drain district or that watershed could be liable for a share of the costs that incurred on work on that drain. Um, and we divide it up a, a number of ways. Um, one is through the transportation authorities. So like the roads, interstates, railroads, et cetera, that traverse a watershed we can charge them. So they get a special assessment based on how much of the road is in the, the watershed, for example. Um, now for you as a local municipality, you are fortunate enough that you get to pay a cost. Um, most of the time that cost is between five and 35% of whatever we spend. Um, there are occasions, and again, this is based on what we, chapter 20 within the drain code, but there are some drains where townships or the, the cities pay 100% of the costs um, and, and no one else contributes. So, so we have a, a small number of those as well. And then finally, the property owners within the district, they pay the remainder of whatever those costs are. So essentially what we do is every year, um, each one of these separate legal entity drain districts and funds um, we, we tally up 
the, the cost to maintain that drain over a particular year. And then we issue an assessment, which it, it does go on the December tax bill. But again, I, I, I want to make sure it's people realize it's it's separate from the tax. It's actually an assessment or more of a pay of you go go thing. So if we don't do work on the drain, you don't pay money. If we do work on the drain, then you're liable for the, the cost of it. So if it's if it's a maintenance spending, we can do that in a single year, or we have to, we, we do that over a single year. But some of these petition projects that can be kind of pricey, we do have a, uh, the ability to pay for those uh, multiple years, all the way up to 20 years. And we, we actually borrow the money, issue notes or bonds, um, and then it, they get paid back through these special assessments through the years. So it can be a complex thing, but I, I think that's that's the quick and dirty version of it. We can go to the next one. And then finally, I keep saying it, one of the messages I just hope to get through is if you're just not sure about something or you wanna talk further, um, again, if you're a tech person, get hold of us online, call us. Autumn does the book of faces for our office. So I know we keep up on that. Um, the Twitter, uh, all next door, actually I'm on next door. So I guess I'm technologically advantaged now. So, uh, but please, if, <clears throat> if you just need to talk and say, hey, how does this stuff work? Get a hold of us. So that would be my main message. And I apologize for going a little long and I'll, um, leave it for, for Theo to talk about a little bit more interesting stuff. And also if there were questions, I guess why we're setting up, I don't know if anyone had anything. I did have one question, Scott. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Okay. So in Bridgewater Township, um, we had a new assessment on the winter tax bill and I'm a new treasurer, so I'm getting lots of phone calls um, about this uh, drain assessment. It's called the BVT debt, yep. the big project. Um, and I'm getting questions mostly because we have that Bridgewater Commons, the condo development, and people wanna know if it's a 10 year assessment they want to know if that's something that can be paid off. Oh, yeah. Actually, we have an assessment uh, manager or coordinator, but I know the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> uh, so BVT, that's short for the Bridgewater Village Tile. Yes. Um, and the, I, I give you the history because I just, this is a big project, <laughs> even for our office. It is. But we've had several years um, where that what I would call has been catastrophic failures on it. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had to do emergency work, which as you probably guess is it's, it's a lot more expensive to do emergency work than planned work. Mm -hmm. so, um, For sure. so that project just wrapped up over this past fall, mm -hmm. where the entire drain from um, Kaiser all the way up um, through Austin and, and north of there, a couple branches through the Hennis and um, uh, Dwayne's fields, Com completely replaced. Um, it was, you know, that's a that's a pretty big project for us. For, so to get back to your question, um, all of the debt that that we've incurred on that, um, it is a multi-year assessment. But anybody has the ability if they they want to call us, we can give you a payoff amount. So okay. Mortgage, you can do an early payoff, pay off, especially if you're gonna, you're, the house is gonna change hands or something like that, mm -hmm. or you just wanna um, not pay the interest on, right. on the remaining debt. It, it's right now the interest rates are pretty pretty small, so I, I wouldn't call it a, a you know too onerous of a, a, a debt burden, but uh, in the interest way. But um, yes, that's the very short answer: is you you can request a payoff amount and pay off early if you'd wish to. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And just to be clear for anybody else too, um, that one we borrowed money internal internally, and the county treasurer a provides us a, a little bit better rate than we would get on the open market. But more importantly, we save a lot of money on 
uh, just overhead costs of dealing with all the legal counsel that's required. We, we typically save upwards of 10 to 15% of uh, total project costs when we're able to borrow internally. So that's a real benefit that we're lucky to have a county treasurer like, like we do because it benefits the townships. We, we rarely, even though this was a big project for us, we were able to do internal financing. And that, so that's true on a vast majority of any major project work we do. Good, thank you. Excellent, well, I will uh, start and wanna thank everyone. Um, I'm Theo Argerman. I'm the Public Works Director at Washtenaw County, and so I'm going to talk to you about public works and solid waste. Um, do you want to move this slide forward? Um, thanks. So as Evan mentioned, we don't do much uh, in terms of water and sewer um, currently, but we, we have a fair number of lake management programs, and I'll talk about those. Uh, as far as solid waste, uh, we spend a little bit more of our time on the solid waste side of things. We're the designated planning agency, so we create and implement the county solid waste plan. Um, this was created a long time ago, um, at least the, the impetus for having a solid waste plan. And we, um, it used to be focused mostly on having 10 years of landfill space, but as things have changed, uh, we have an abundance of landfill space in Michigan and our plan focuses much more on recycling and diverting material from a landfill as well as keeping the nasty stuff out of the landfill. So that's typically the domain that we uh, end up working in. Um, one of the ways that we, well, we actually don't collect any solid waste or recycling material other than um, hazardous waste. We have a small drop off site. Um, we do create the, um, the systems that improve that solid waste system within the county. So we set up certain structures like authorities um, create incentives to reduce waste within the county, and we do fill in some gaps um, like collecting, collecting hazardous waste uh, within the county. We also provide some policy support and development. If municipalities are looking at creating an ordinance, we can help out, get some resources, and help usher you through that process. Uh, and then we also support end market development, where if we're just collecting stuff and not using it for anything, that's not recycling. Uh, we have to yeah, actually have to turn it into something. So we want to make sure that we're both pushing on the recycling side as well as supporting end markets to create that pull. Um, and then the thing that you're probably most familiar with is we do provide convenient access for residents to get rid of difficult materials. And so I'll talk about a couple of our programs that we uh, operate there to do that. Next slide. Um, so under Public Works, uh, we operate under PA 185, which I'm much more fortunate than Scott. Uh, PA 185, you can over the course of a cup of coffee uh, as opposed to the course of a week like uh, the drain code. Um, so that allows us to create lake assessment um, projects. And the focus of these is really to control invasive plants and algae um, and improve recreation and biodiversity at the same time. So these are special assessments. So the, the users on the lake um, and nearby that may have like a dock on the lake um, they pay into the special assessment based on the benefit that they receive. Uh, we have four different projects, which range from relatively small with a couple hundred, hundred residents uh, to the Huron River Chain of Lakes, which is a system of nine lakes and has um, around 2,300 um, parcels within it um, or properties. So quite extensive and one of the more complicated um, projects within the state. These are relatively common um, and we as I said, we try to provide good customer service um, to residents and answer a lot of calls. We do hire out and contract with a, an applicator as well as a lake scientist to make sure that we're um, keeping in mind the e ecological system and uh, making sure that we're doing things um, in a way that benefits the lake. Next slide. As I mentioned on the solid waste side, we wanna create the structures um, that lead to a positive and functioning system. So we we helped set up in 1991, um, the Western Washtenaw Recycling Authority under PA 185. Um, that serves the Western side of the county. Um, their focus is on recycling collection and processing. They also do some compost. Um, and then we recently set up Warma on the Eastern side of the county. 
um, using a different public act, which oddly enough, also you can set up a dog pound for. Um, those were two needs at the time when they created it, but this is a solid waste authority. Um, the Regionally, there was multiple municipalities that identified some common issues enough to get uh, band together to create a, um, a new authority. Primarily, we're focused on education and outreach right now. Um, eventually, we might move into um, some kind of common contract for processing uh, within those counties. And this is funded by um, the municipalities that provide an annual due. And then we match those for the first couple of years to help get them off the ground. So we're serving as the um, administrators of the, the authority for the first couple of years to get them off their feet. And next slide. So probably the, the largest program that we operate um, is the Home Toxic Center. You probably are familiar with this. We're located at 705 North Z, right next to Sio Road or uh, Sio Township. We did a survey recently and we found that we're the, the most available drop off, uh, hazardous waste drop off within the state. So we're pretty proud about that um, for being a small operation to be very accessible. Um, so we're open weekdays as well as a few Saturdays uh, a month, April to November. And we collect a lot of materials, all the things that are under your, your kitchen sink and in your garage and in your basement, uh, paint batteries and flammables, um, all that kind of stuff. So we've been especially busy as people have been home during the pandemic, uh, cleaning out their garage and basement. The main goal uh, that we have is to keep all that nasty stuff out of the environment um, and then subsequently out of our bodies. And just to note, we this was a big year for us. Uh, we collected a little over 400,000 pounds. So if you think about a, that on a daily basis, that's a thousand pounds of um, some nasty stuff that we end up collecting um, each day. And then we do take that uh, show on the road and sprinkle it at different locations throughout the county, um, adding in some additional um, collections for hard to get rid of materials, things like um, electronics, bulky waste like mattresses, tires, appliances, uh, scrap metal. Um, and we try and make these as accessible as possible uh, for residents to get rid of those things. Um, so we have events in like Northfield, uh, Chelsea, Ypsilanti, Augusta, and um, Pittsfield, Saline area as well. So we'll, we'll get anywhere from a couple hundred cars to, um, at some of the smaller events to 750 at some of the larger events. One of the things that we're looking to do, um, or one of the things that's challenging for us is having a host. Um, so we just typically need a, a parking lot and that can be a small one for a small event, um, or typically high schools end up being really good for us because um, there's multiple different lots that we can help uh, navigate traffic through and have different drop off points. Um, so if you're interested in hosting an event, please reach out to us. Um, as I mentioned, one of the most challenging things for us is we just don't have locations all across the county. So having a location uh, as a host is really helpful. Um, I know we've helped support Bridgewater um, as they've had their own collection event uh, in the past, but do reach out if you're interested. Um, you might want to do like a one-off event, like a tire drive. Um, and you can see me in the bottom there. Um, it's, it's nice that I get to do the office stuff once in a while, but I also can get a, get a little bit dirty with tires as well from time to time and get my hands on things. So next slide. Uh, I mentioned before that we want to support end market development as well. Um, so we did create a um, solid waste reduction sponsorships uh, program. So anything that ends up reducing waste um, or diverting material from the landfill um, will help match those funds uh, for qualified applications. So if you're interested in that um, or know someone who might be interested in that, uh, feel free to spread the word about this program. Um, I've got the link on there and reach out because we are interested in um, promoting that uh, program. Next slide. And then last thing, um, I like to end on this slide because I think it drives home what, what we're about, what we're trying to do. Um, this is the uh, longevity of the programs uh, that we've had, the home toxic and the uh, county cleanup days. We've ended up diverting or keeping out um, about 6 million pounds of hazardous material uh, from the environment by collecting it and getting it processed, sending it to the right location where it's not going to leak out into the environment and into our bodies. So 
with that, I will uh, finish and take any questions. We've got a couple minutes left here. This is um, Kim Thompson. I have a quick question. Uh, if we would like to do like a tire drive and all that, what would be like the time frame that would be needed to set that up? Yeah, um, I think one of the biggest things that we're going to need is just a few weeks for advertising. Um, so I'd say if I'd say a minimum, we'd want to have a month and a half just so we can uh, get contracts in place and get all that um, and then do some marketing afterwards. So ideally, we'd have you know, three months and we could organize it and get a little bit better outreach. Okay, thank you very much. And what what uh, community are you in, Kim? M Manchester Township. Oh, excellent. Yeah, we haven't done anything out there, um, so that would be great. Okay, thank you. So I gotta ask Kim, because um, he used to work with us and I haven't talked to him in a while. Do you know Ron Mann? <laughs> sure do, sure do. How come Amy's laughing Yes, for too? a long time. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's an icon relation. in Manchester. <laughs> yeah, I'm related oh, to yeah, Ron. Oh yeah, Amy does so. too, I forgot. Yeah, he's my cousin. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yep. you have to be careful in manchester you can't talk about anybody <laughs> that's right we're all related right somehow. right right can, can... isn't larry still on the call because he's from manchester too yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i got my i got my haircut and uh my haircut lady is from uh that area as well <laughs> um any other questions just i got a couple yeah. Closing comments, but go ahead. I was wondering, is Amy's bridge behind her connected to Evans Island behind him? I just... <laughs> they're, they're, they're a few thousand miles away. I'm in Puget Sound, and I think that's the Bay Area, isn't it, Amy? Yeah. Um, just a couple of wrap-up thoughts. So Scott showed you the map where our county drains. is one thing that frustrates uh, people. And again, we have uh, common constituents, right? I, You know, we have drains in maybe 65% of the county and population wise, it's almost 85, 90% of people are in a county drainage district, but they're all in a township. So these are the same customers for all of us. We wanna make sure that uh, people don't have to hear about who does what and how, you know, we wanna just make sure your people are happy because there are people too. And if it means we gotta uh, help out or, or get in contact with other people, that's what we wanna do. But one thing that always frustrates people is especially if they paid an assessment before and they know the generals and they feel like, well, I'm not getting a lot of benefit. Uh, and here I called in for a problem and they're not gonna fix it on my property. And the, the catch is we can only perform work in those creeks themselves or in the pipe itself, that map that Scott showed of the blue lines. Those are the only places we can legally do work. There's processes to extend or expand uh, those type of things. And sometimes that's appropriate. A lot of times it's not. Uh, but we're happy to work with you again, like I said at the beginning on if somebody's just being persistent and they've got a problem, we're happy to try to troubleshoot it, even if we're not involved in the solution. We'd like to be able to provide some guidance because we know not everybody uh, deals with these sorts of things every day. But in, in essence, only about 15 to 20 percent of the historic creeks are actually established as county drains. And uh, the funny thing a lot of people don't realize is the road commission has about twice as many miles of drainage infrastructure as us, actually a little more than twice as much. Uh, just about any uh, drain system that's public that goes cross country is gonna be ours. We have a few that parallel uh, roadways, but it's more common that uh, drainage systems, ditches or pipes that parallel roadways, and even the culverts across them are technically the road commissions. But we meet with them every two months uh, we don't spend a lot of time in, in, on detailed items and individual requests, but if there's a problem issue that keeps coming up, we certainly talk about it. If there's construction proposed by either of us, we're coordinating that. We have to issue permits to each other and uh, we work together on that. So I just want to make sure that's uh, out there and, and people have just a little background. There's, it's more, more of the creeks and streams are eagles and there isn't anyone to fix anything for anybody. <laughs> so just, just so we're clear, people don't like to hear that. 
we can get involved and set it up. So there is a mechanism and a setup. As Scott mentioned, these have been uh, getting it set up since uh, even the late 1830s is when uh, drain law started. It was townships first and then counties starting in the 1890s, late 1890s. But at the end of the day, like Scott said, we spend other people's money. We try to be economical with that. And I would say, you know, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but probably about 70% of the conversations I have where somebody's called in and they've got a water problem and they're frustrated and they want to fix it. We're not necessarily trying to dodge responsibility, but where, where we don't currently have responsibility, we're often trying to help somebody get where they want to go, help them understand how to solve it. But unless there's maybe 50, 100, or a couple hundred properties involved, usually the the time and energy it takes for us to get involved and go through the processes doesn't make sense. A lot of times there's neighbor disputes or, or that type of thing that we're happy to come in and give advice. We've actually got a, a book that talks about what the case law is for neighbor disputes. You, you know, you can't block your neighbor's water from passing your land if that's the way it's been going forever and ever. And likewise, your neighbor can't start shedding more water towards you or doing things that are different than historic. So we do have a little guidebook that we provide pretty often to people on that. But I just want to put that out there. And my, my kind of closing thought on that is um, we, uh, as Scott mentioned, it does end up on a tax bill. It's technically a special assessment. I don't usually argue with people when they call it a tax. I mean, because it is on their tax bill. But we send out 30 to 35,000 bills every year. Um, more than half of those are less than $10. So it, it really is pretty minor. Uh, and I'm talking about maintenance, you know, when you have a big project, Amy, like you say, I know it's more like a few hundred dollars on average, but 96, 97% of our assessments are less than $50. And as Scott was, you know, quickly describing, uh, people get charged just proportionate to uh, a proxy for how much water runs off their land. If you own 100 acres, uh, of, of ag land, you're going to pay more than somebody with 10 acres of ag land. If you own 10 acres of residential property, you're going to pay at a little higher rate per acre, uh, but you're probably still going to pay less than somebody with 100 acres of ag property. And, uh, you know, commercial developments and stuff that have more hard surface pay even more than residential. So it, it's a, uh, we use a sim system that's kind of simplified, but fair to make sure that people who are shedding more water are, are carrying a little bit more of the load, just so you've got a general feel for it. Um, and with that, again, my number is 734-277-5359. And Mark knows sometimes I get back quick and sometimes it's a little slower. You had a question? Yeah, I, did, I just had a quick question. Large farm runoff, does that come under the purview of your office? Or when it's contaminated, is it a state issue or? Yeah, so if there is uh, issues with uh, manure spreading or confined animal feeding operations, the CAFOs, that's EGLE regulated. Um, if there is a, any type of pollution problem that gets into a county drain, then we do have authority to chase that back to the source. Um, it's usually harder for us to go and do that if it's clearly a CAFO issue and uh, Eagle has regulatory authority, but we're happy to go back. If you can imagine, particularly in an ag agricultural area, uh, number one, whether you're agricultural or urban, there's gonna be poop in almost every uh, drainage system and almost every water. And as my predecessor used to say, until they figure out how to keep diapers on raccoons, that's gonna keep happening. So if you've got poop in drains, you have to be able to, you can DNA test to find out what kind it is. But then if you've got whatever, it's from horses or cows or whatever, and there's nine horse farms or three cattle operations in the vicinity, it gets harder and harder to go back and be able to say, we know for sure it's from these folks. Now, if the creek is starts on one particular property and you can you know pin it down, that's relatively easy for us to go after it. And the good news is I believe on the pollution side, I got to confirm this for other reasons tomorrow. Um, like our other special assessments, I believe that we end up, we, we usually send a letter that says, hey, you've got an issue, talk to us, but you do need to clean it up. Here's a time frame. Uh, we usually give them a time frame that's longer than the law allows us five days if we've got a major issue or if we're, or if we're at wit's end. But at the end of the day, um, 
I believe, like the special assessments, our ability to lay our expenses if we have to clean up something for somebody onto their tax bill makes creates a little bit more motivation uh, to get compensated for that. We've had other situations with problems where we've had to go solve it. And, uh, you know, a jury generally is not going to favor the government agency against somebody who can spin a good story, even if they did something really bad. And we've found that it's really almost impossible to recover those costs. Not, not that that's the biggest issue, but our problem is, like Scott said, we don't really have a pot of money to recover costs. So we, if we have to fix something and chase somebody and we rack up a lot of legal fees, it, like I always say, if you, if you sue the government and win, or if the government sues you and they win, whatever, the, the only source of, of funding is that drainage district. So we have to be really careful if we're chasing something down and the cost of chasing it is going to get spread among everybody in the district. So we, in past situations, people in the district have understood that there is some risk to them of going after somebody, but they really feel strongly about it and we pursue it. Typically, before we go into legal action, we do spend a little time with people. You, you want to mediate before you go there. And I just wanted to end on complimenting your office uh, on the uh, Chain of Lakes Special Assessment District. Um, I just uh, I would just pass on public comments, uh, public positive comments from uh, at least from my association and the people I hear from on the chain of lakes. That's all Theo and Lauren. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. A little uh, bit, right? And Lauren as well. Thank you. All right. Anything else, anybody? All right. Thanks a bunch. Thanks for joining us. Hey, by the way, actually, last thing. If you thought this was helpful, uh, when Autumn sends out the link, please pass it along. Pass it along to your other board members or people in the community are fine. We've talked about doing something like this for just general community members. We'd be happy to customize it for a township. We're happy to come to board meetings. Uh, we like to come see you and not ask you to come to our office. Uh, or at least get into an alternating method if we're doing regular visits with each other. But please uh, share the information if you think it would be helpful to others uh, that you know. Thanks a lot.